Certainly feels like that, you know, like especially when if you could get all the way to the end too and you just end up in second, it, it just it, it stings. I feel like second stings a lot more than, you know, seventh or eighth. But right now, man, Stingray trying to play to the top the best of their ability off to a nice start there. It was a beautiful combo and continuing to put this damage down. But Sandstorm not landing a hit yet until right there, just one stray hit. Yeah, and so far Stingray's been playing so unbelievably well with this Orion throughout the entirety of this tournament. Great setups going up against the likes of, say, Viper and, say, so many different players. But Stingray has been able to be so adaptive. A little bit slower, more calculated play style. And if Stingray were to go up against Yuz later on, might be a great slow battle that builds up that tension. But speaking of building up tension, Sandstorm losing that first stock and Stingray only a few dents in that armor. Man, and that is definitely a tough spot to be in there. But now we're seeing the Scythe come into play. And listen, I know there's one thing that I have seen consistently is that when Sandstorm has that Scythe in hand, it just feels like a different piece. Now, I, it's not to say he's not good with the gauntlets, but the Scythe just feels different. You ever get that yeah. vibe? He, he's the Scythe player. Always has been, always will be. Was a relatively unknown name way back in the day, but then when Scythe came out, boom, world champion. <laughs> Sometimes all it takes is one weapon. As we can see right here, the weapon tosses trying to keep Stingray as starved as possible if he can. But ah, allowing him to slip in just underneath, picking up that rocket lance. And man, we know what Stingray can do with a rocket lance. Oh, oh when they get yes. their hands on it. Oh. Yeah, and this is going to be tough. Usually, generally, the Scythe has a bit of an advantage aerially going down for those dares against the Lance. Stingray's, of course, aware that goes for the ledge guard. Tries to accompany that with a neutral sig to keep Sandstorm into the air. Removes the Scythe completely, and again, same story. Sandstorm able to even up that second stock, but again, once Stingray goes down, it makes it a big buffer room once again. Oh, and I like that. Sandstorm just tried to get one quick hit to keep Stingray away to get that weapon, and Stingray immediately answered with a hit back to kind of you know, keep Sandstorm as weapon starved as possible for as long as possible. But as you can see, Sandstorm struggling here. Hasn't really been able to get a whole lot of offense going. It's just been the Stingray show from start to finish so far. But listen, if there's one thing that uh, I know for sure, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. And Sandstorm is a finisher, but Stingray also looking to finish the job. Yeah, and Sandstorm's taking that godly approach. A lot of pressure, a little bit of zoning going through, and a lot, lack of attacks coming out. Really just keeping Stingray at bay, looking to see what attacks can go through and just immediate punishes. Those gauntlets now underway. No setups really, trying to read into where Stingray's landing will be. Does not quite find it though. It does allow opportunity for Stingray though to have that setup send Sandstorm off the stage. But again, quick recovery sends Stingray into the air and against the Lance once they're in the air. That's something you don't want to go up against immediately. Ledge guard back around Sandstorm going from behind. Does find some gauntlet presence and the setup is there. Breaks it to a single stock, stock line for both. And man, this could be the situation you need to try and really turn this one around. And now Sandstorm having that scythe in hand too, a last stock scenario. Granted, they only need a couple of hits for Stingray to try and close out this game one. But we talked about it, man. Sandstorm is a different beast with this scythe. And look at this damage start to rack up slowly but surely, not extending any more than he really needs to. And the damage is getting big, it's getting insurmountable. Stingray looking like they're in a lot of trouble. Oh, the recovery oh, goes oh, through. Oh. An advantage for stock one. An advantage for stock two. But you got to remember, there's always a third stock. Sandstorm, beautiful comeback there. I can't wait to see the graph at the end of the series because Sandstorm's biggest gift, right? We talked about Godly and how the Dodgers are just impeccable. Sandstorm's longevity, being able to use these stocks and keep them going for the absolute maximum amount of time that you can in this game has been the single biggest strength of that player. I mean, hey, it's what we kind of talked about. It's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. And Sandstorm rose to the occasion here, but now getting into game two, we're gonna see if Stingray can try to find a way to get back on the board. We've already seen Stingray get 3-0'd earlier. It would be a shame to get 3-0'd again, especially when you've made it this far into bracket. You gotta put up a fight. And so far, not looking too bad, relatively even across the board, but this is kind of what we saw last time. You know, Sandstorm had these gauntlets, just wasn't really able to get the offense going and all of a sudden the scythe came out to play and uh <laughs> we saw the story get written right in front of our eyes yeah and stingray struggling against this fast aggression from sandstorm neutral games heavily in their favor trying to go for that read again sandstorm's been a little preemptive with it so far but then again though the adjustments are made after stingray trying to find that impact Come on. 
completely Ooh. canceled off that signature. Okay? Yeah, you, you, we, okay. we all saw that. We all thought that stock was going to be disappearing here, but Sandstorm just wasn't able to get a Stingray disrupting that gameplay. And now Stingray now maintaining stage control here. Going to be looking to try and find a way to close out this stock. And as you can see, both players being very careful. And man, oh. we've seen Stingray actually throw out that SIG a few times now and get, some, and get big punished for it. But able to take this first lead here, definitely what we want to see. Yeah, this spear from Stingray, so good so far, has been able to keep up the pace of Sandstorm. Sandstorm, weapon, no weapon, unarmed, whatever, it doesn't matter, Sandstorm's able to find that impact. And Stingray so far off the stage, the kick with the scythe goes away, even stock count. Now I'm worried, Skip, I'm worried about Stingray, because remember, in game one, we had seen that huge stock lead for both stocks one and two. Sandstorm still came out the victor. Stingray needs to build an advantage here on that second stock, and there's no other opportunity. Ledge guard here, no offstage play. Stingray playing is so patiently, and Sandstorm taking the advantage. Multiple hits, the grind coming out. Gets back onto the stage, sure, but the weapons are possibly in play. I don't think Stingray has an opportunity to get that lance. Does Ooh. throw the weapon, doesn't connect against Sandstorm. Now without a weapon, goes in unarmed like it's nothing. But now we see that Scythe come into Sandstorm's hands when he needed it most. And we're going to see if he can try to find a way to put this lead. Stingray tossing the weapon and tried to get a big play out of that. Okay, they were able to get the stock. I thought they put themselves in the worst position possible. So thank goodness, you know, I don't know any better. Stingray knows exactly what they're doing. Putting yourself in that worst position sometimes means you're not readable. Stingray has that advantage now that we were talking about. The game one advantage is back, but Sandstorm on that final stock, the most devastating thing of all. It's almost like it's four extra gained. And now look, very little damage applied. A much slower game now. Winnie anticipating what Stingray's gonna throw out. The weapon throw comes by, does cancel out Sandstorm's movement, yes, but up in the air. Punishes are there. The Scythe is now returning. The gauntlets are now gone. This offstage against Sandstorm's Scythe is not where you wanna be. I mean, this is what it comes down to as well, you know, like just the whole situation, right? You kind of mentioned it. On that last stock, it turns into a different game. It's like what happens when you back the beast against the wall, when you put them in the corner? How do they respond? We saw how Sandstorm responded in game one, and it looks like in game two, there might be the same scenario here. We got to hope Stingray is keeping their head in the game because this is looking very, very dangerous right now. Very, very dangerous. The best way to put it, Skip, I completely agree. Neutral game in the favor of Stingray. Bouncing around, not going for wild attacks anymore. Try not to have those startups. Sandstorm deep red on that final stock. This is the opportunity now to bring it one to one for the set. But off stage, recovery's there. Big blast zones. Not going to be easy on Lions. The scythe is now picked back up. Oh, this is so terrifying right there. But we do see Stingray close it out when he needs it to, and you can see him reacting in his chair. And thank goodness, Keg, because I was very nervous here. Because if we got into a scenario where Sandstorm took it all the way again in a game two, right, when you were in that much of a lead, who knows what mentality Stingray would have had, you know? So just to be able to get that close it out, thank goodness we've got a ball game on our hands. Now, I'm not much of a math guy, Skip. But now, I think we're guaranteed game four. No more 3-0s for at least this set. And when you're facing elimination this deep in the BCX, you want every game you could possibly have. Yes. And I mean, that's also the other thing, too, is that Stingray can kind of, you know, have a sigh of relief here. You know, not worried about getting 6 0 this <laughs> on, on stream or anything like that. But, like, the fact that you've got a game under your belt, right? We all know, you know the mystique around Sandstorm. But the fact you're able to take a game, even things up, one apiece here, you're definitely like, okay, I can handle this. I can play to their level. I can go the distance. But we still got to see it done. We got to see it get going here. Right now in Small Haven, doing a good job to get things started. I'm not sure who picked this stage. Oh! I would say normally this is in the favor of Sandstorm. But that spear play that we're seeing, the setups again, the neutral like almost connecting from Stingray. It's putting that pressure on. Scythe is now out against an unarmed Stingray. It might not matter. Oh, he said, nice combo. It's mine. Ooh. It's mine now. You lose the stock here. And Stingray continues to push forward, hopefully not looking back at all. All that's in the distance is another W on this game, too. But we do see Sandstorm answer back here, trying to even things up. Has taken a little bit of damage, but a little bit of damage ain't no thing when you can get a nice combo under your belt. Let's talk adjustments. Sandstorm's first stock in these sets. Not really the 
the biggest thing to talk about, right? But that second stock leads into the pressure of that final stock where Sandstorm ramps up the difficulty. It's like arcade mode for Stingray or anybody that goes up against Sandstorm. But toe to toe, again, another dance, a tango between the two. And unarmed Sandstorm fears nothing against the nares of Stingray. Again, all, co all bases covered. Stingray's just looking to find those reeds, see where those spot dodges are gonna land into for Stingray, I'm sorry, for Sandstorm. But the gauntlets are back out, and when you have a gauntlet versus the lands, it should be the lands with the advantage. Wow. Neutral sink into the air, and Sandstorm looking to find a way to get back down, but the recovery just manages to remove the lands from contention. And like, look, I, I understand Sandstorm took that stock, that was a nice lead, but that spacing and that whole sequence from Stingray was top not man, that was absolutely incredible. And as we can see, trying to answer back here. Oh, oh no, 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 oh, no, please don't let this be the end. Stingray, get back to the stage, please. Oh my goodness, oh. that was so terrible. Oh, I was so scared for Stingray. Any other part of BCX besides the Elim bracket, Sandstorm would have went for it. Oh. And you know what? Little long term, Sandstorm got punished for it. Yeah, I mean, if you really think about it, it was like, oh, I really let him back on the stage. I was able to let him reset neutral. And as you can see, Stingray's taking that and running with it, putting on a nice little bit of combos, all right, and a little bit of damage. Nothing crazy, but Sandstorm finding the way back on, not able to convert, getting punished for dropping the combo as well. Stingray continues the spacing, carrying him all the way around across the stage, keeping him up in the air, the jungle situation, okay? Stingray is doing so good about these setups, zoning out Sandstorm's gauntlets. No oh. response coming out from this player. A multi-time world champion, now deep red. Not for elimination just yet, but coming oh. pretty dang close, Skiff. Stingray taking game three, and now we're getting into that game four that you mentioned earlier, and now having that lead, right? We've already talked about, you know, dropping the lead to Sandstorm in that game one, but obviously that mentality from Stingray is top Notch, as we can see, getting into not just game two, taking that game two W, that game three W, and continuing to move forward. Honestly, just looking better and better as the game goes on. Now, they have been kind of trading, you know, back and forth, like some amazing plays, great spacing, the neutral, but like Singray obviously is getting the better of everything in the long term. And now you're one game away from top eight at BCX 2022. Now, can you close it out or will Sandstorm be the Grim Reaper here with that scythe and try to put you down? This is for elimination. If you're a fan of Sandstorm, you gotta worry. Three but stocks left, potentially all that Sandstorm has left in BCX. Having a quiet beginning of 2022. Now grinding again in the latter half of this year, specifically for this moment. Stingray coming in with a disadvantage, losing a weapon now, deep red on that first stock. Sandstorm full control, full weapon starve against Stingray. This set up into the recovery. This might not be the final three. This is terrifying right now. <laughs> there's, there's nothing else to say about it. It's just scary chills. all the way chills. through, man. Uh, not even chills, I'm sweating. Yeah, I am too. sweating so much right now. I can't even imagine <laughs> being in the hot seat here between these two players. It's actually <laughs> kind of ridiculous. But right now, we do see the two of them battling it out. Sandstorm still maintaining this third stock, building up damage as the game goes on as well. Stingray just not able to close this one out. The extra credit is mounting, and it's getting worse. Ooh. Oh, no! Ooh. Uncharacteristic SD! Unchained, the beast has been unleashed. A two-stock lead from Sandstorm, and Stingray has oh, no, no opportunity. Oh, no, no! Response! Sandstorm nearly lost that first stock and already deep orange. Oh, Stingray geez. has not been able to land a single oh, attack geez. on this stock. This could be the three-stock that Sandstorm wants, oh. but no! The possible greatest setup shut down by Stingray. The depths so close. Deep red on that final stock for Stingray, and then we could be going skip to game five. But that's the thing, is like, even though you're able to get that stock, you haven't landed a single hit again, and you're not gonna be able to make it back. This is not the type of situation you want going into game five, right? Game five scenario, Sandstorm just beat you down. Never mind those first three games. Those first three games don't matter anymore. That momentum that Sandstorm has from that alone, rising to the occasion, showing why he's still the best in the world, trying to prove to everybody that that is still the case. Game Going into five. game five, Stingray, listen man, you've shown us some godlike mentality as it is already. I need you to rise to that second level. I need the crowd to give Stingray their energy, or otherwise, listen, if you're a Sandstorm fan, start giving him yours, because this is a game five scenario, baby. Let's get it. I would say the inventor of the site, 
now making that possible final demonstration in BCX. Stingray again, unbelievable, has grinded, found so much success this year, so much success at BCX, and this is the moment where it all came to, all that pressure, all that hard work, all that grinding, just for this moment, just for this game five, Deep Red, Sandstorm starting off not on a hot streak. It's Sting right now who's clapping back. We had seen what Sandstorm could do on Small Haven, a larger stage in the benefit of Stingray. Sandstorm benefited from the small hitboxes, the small blast zones of Small Haven. But going back to Lions, more room to set up with the spear. Ooh. Sandstorm for the ledge guard, sure, but again, the damage may have already been done. That spear, the setup again, looking for the stairs, looking to find the approach again. Sandstorm, not gonna be found just yet. And there we go, we got that scythe in hand too, but does not matter, it's gonna disappear very, very quickly. Stingray taking that early lead, and that's exactly what I wanna see, because man, losing a game four like that, it, it's tough, it's tough to be able to battle back sometimes, but that's the difference between good players and great players, and it's what Stingray's doing right now, he's showing greatness. Now you gotta be consistent here, it's not over yet, you got two more stocks you gotta burn through before we can consider you a top eight qualifier, but Sandstorm, not just gonna lay down and take, he's gonna battle back, every which way the call is in hand trying to put the beat down taking that stock off the top and we remember that first stock of sandstorm and all these matches so far have been a little okay they've been good they've been good but again the ramp up the roller coaster for two and three have been just completely different games and stingray starting off without having a weapon at all for this second stock it's nerve-wracking it's scary there's no other way to put it sandstorm has been this looming force this phantom over stingray for the entirety of these last five games the gauntlet setups are there we talked about the prominence that he's had with that scythe but these gauntlets have really shown up in this set that being said, though, there is a ledge guard. Sandstorm's gonna back off and give respect oh. to Stingray. Allows the setup for Stingray to find a little bit of damage, but it's all for that Scythe to return. Oh, this is so scary because Stingray had some beautiful movement there to get around Sandstorm, put a little bit of damage on, but losing the second stock. You can see Stingray reeling forward. You can definitely tell it hurt him. He knows the scenario right now. He knows the danger that he's in, and Sandstorm has that sight. The Grim Reaper is here. Is he going to be able to close this out? Tries to go for it. Stingray barely finding a way out, surviving by the skin of his very teeth, Keg. <gasps> but down to one, a ground pound against Sandstorm. We haven't seen anything like it yet a final stock game five for both players all for bcx contention in the elim bracket oh this is so terrifying kick both of them battling their hearts out right now sandstorm oh that was huge went the wrong way with that stingray having a second chance at life for sure but trying to stay alive you gotta battle back man the crowd has definitely got some energy for you but they got some energy from sandstorm too right now sandstorm with the gauntlets opting for these i mean we've seen the scythe actually kind of be the game maker the bread winner the set winning game changing weapon for him but the call is is this what's going to be able to close it out? oh he had it there he had it there a weapon throw the spear back out stingrace not unleashing all two players tethered together bouncing off of each other so well the chemistry oh, is there and that's gonna be it. Oh, is my out. God. <laughs> sandstorm is out game five final stock between the two stingray we talked about gold medal in the winters, the summers, the autumns, mid-seasons. It wasn't found, and this is one step closer, a stepping stone. What a better way to show it off, Skip, than oh, beating man. one of the few world champions of this game. Absolutely insane stuff, and you can see the homies coming around, giving them his celebrations, and they know, they know exactly what happened here. Sandstorm being in this position, unheard of granted he's been gone for so long and to take that w because we saw sandstorm playing some of the best brahala we've seen all day and it looked like it was unstoppable right there what a beautiful read on that sig to be able to close that out absolutely insane and look at the damage there's only a 30 30 point difference and that's actually in sandstorm's favor it's just so insane to think about but you know what i know sandstorm didn't get in the top eight i know he didn't go the distance but the fact that he was gone for so long came back put on a show like that letting everybody know i am still in this game i'm still one of your best players in the world and i will be back for sure i hope Hope he continues to put his heart into this because man we need him absolutely i would still say undisputed best scythe player in the world oh <laughs> careful of your hot take oh, yeah i know <laughs> might burn yourself really spicy oh, i know man. but i mean the scythe player right yeah, just like the gauntlets again really fantastic i would say we saw gauntlets more than scythe in right. this set and for the most part i feel like 
I don't want to say it was saving strats or keeping any secrets away.